pretty unique that three brothers, really unique, I and mean, there's only a few that have done that really, like all found the same passion and entered the same space and excelled in the same space. You know, you have aspirations and, and you want to achieve dreams and growing up, competition was the route that allowed you to improve and hang with friends. It was a community effort and so getting conditioned in that system, it was exciting and, and yeah, it's definitely a dream. The earliest memories of surfing, waking up and we all shared a room. Tanner and I were in bunk beds and Pat was in his own little room. Or no. No. Bed. Yeah, yeah, bed. same room. So we wake up in the same room and we just load up. We watch like some cartoons and eat apples and then get loaded in the van and just go hang. And we weren't really riding waves. We were kind of splashing and maybe there was a kickboard or a boogie board that was oversized and at Doheny. And that's really earliest memories that I can think of. They weren't necessarily with much intention of performing or surfing at any level. It was more just like, hey, we're all going to the beach. Mom and dad are gonna go surf and hang and you're gonna be along for the journey. They would work really hard, real humble kind of program and work Monday to Friday. And it was like, hey, Saturday and Sunday, we're as a family gonna go to the beach. And that was kind of like your time that everyone kind of came together. And being in the ocean together just creates this energy that's fun. It's laughing, having a good time, not, and it was just such a special moment to share. Tanner was always on the boogie board starting out, like for <laughs> <laughs> the long-term boogie master for a bit, and then it's sick because it just kind of like, yeah, you just kind of grow into yeah. those different stages of surfing that were just like pretty insane. I think T was like, we were like, <laughs> dude, since you're ready to rock, let's roll. Like get in the car, let's go surf, so. And that's probably why Tanner, I feel like, in terms of his serving progress so much in young space, because it was almost like he was two years younger than us, but just equal in terms of everything we did. And it's still that way. I mean, I, I think we both look up to Tanner's surfing, even today, like, on how powerful and, and acrobatic. Kind of almost like if you blend in me and Dane, I feel like that's how I see Tanner surfing. Least, you know? But we never tell him that, but, you know. <laughs> For me coming up, then it was like, oh, I'm just going to go on the road with Pat and Dane probably wouldn't have done that if they weren't already doing it so it's super cool i think like and then probably as we've done that whether it's bigger waves or contests or qualifying or whatever it is like because maybe somebody had done it then you felt like it was more of a tangible path than just like being a solo person and you can almost test multiple pillars of surfing or like surf culture you know like for sure everyone's found their own unique path and then it's in a way we're all influencing each other 24 7 so yeah. We had one period of our life where there was uh, the company we were riding with, they had all the team in the same wetsuits. It was like these orange, like kind of just visible suits. And so we had to wear them as three, and it was just a nightmare. People had so to mortifying. Shit out. It was like <laughs> anywhere we went, because we always surfed you. We were on the radar. In a big <laughs> but that's what kind of sculpted our mentality, too, in the water to generally be kind and give waves and make sure that. You're not a nuisance because we already recognized already at a young age that <laughs> showing up as a three-pack collective, emerging servers, Don't was going to impact the lineup. <laughs> so I think that helped us, you know, grow a mentality that's uh, a little bit more compassionate towards others. More like aware. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. Yeah, a little more aware, self-aware. No? More aware. It's a takeover without being a takeover. Yeah. And we did that today. Though. <laughs> so it still happens. Competition was the entry point, and then yeah, it just brought us into this whole world. For me, I, I just love performing. In that space, that framework of competing, I found it was like really fun to always have a challenge. And it was almost like an ever-going challenge because if you lost or won, the next event's a fresh canvas and you got to like figure out how you wanted to paint that performing art. I liked surfing so much and I felt like I was kind of being confined a little bit through the jersey to like keep it in this one form of it. And it was so natural to just be like, I'm actually over this. Like the whole experience was so fun and cool, but now I'm just so much more inspired to like actually put it into like learning all the different crafts within surfing. Cause surfing is just a lifestyle. And I feel like competitive surfing is like a niche within the niche. So like, I just kind of refocused the zoom lens a little bit and now I'm going in a different direction. As time went on, it just wasn't the ingredients that I was needing to be cooking with, I should say. There's so much more out there in surfing and so yeah, when I had the opportunity, I just said I'm ready for a fresh start and, and just fell in love with tube riding. 
and just people who saw surfing in a kind of creative way that wasn't adhered to anything else and haven't looked back since. The boys really inspired me. Being able to re-sculpt the challenge and not have it be the same challenge is scary, but it's also like a lot of personal growth. And But it's cool, and I think it goes back to that everyone in separate spaces in the same space because we're all interlinked and it seems like you don't even miss a beat. You're like, oh shoot, now we're on for like huge waves or building campaigns or, you know, it's like all these fun things that I don't feel like I've lost the passion or the energy, but you just kind of, it changes to what that is. And that's fun. Growth is so inevitable and it's almost to just be welcomed because it's going to happen no matter what. But I feel like globally surfing is going to be booming. Like from an inspiration palette, there's going to be so much more diversity to dip into. I just, I'm excited about the future. I think so much out there there's enough for all of us and there will always be if we take care of the ocean but that's my mindset when i look towards the future i think it's an optimistic one so.